how a Moroccan product designer has built a SaaS that's done over $140,000 in revenue. So in this video, you'll be learning a little bit about the founder, how they came up with the idea, how they validated it, how they launched it, as well as the three ways they managed to get their first customers to the product. So let's first dive into our entrepreneur here, Bilal. They started as a freelance and product designer in 2009. In 2016, they launched their own agency where they designed and built different SaaS products from companies in Australia to the US. And in July of 2022, they launched their SaaS product. It's called New Link and it's a social media automation and scheduling tool for creators, entrepreneurs, and agencies. So I have the tool up on the screen here and it's gonna let you schedule months of social media content in just minutes helping you plan, automate, and manage your social media and saving you time to focus on your business while your social media runs itself. Now that's a pretty appealing proposition. So how did they come up with this idea? Similar to many other SaaS products, this came from an internal challenge they faced. They were using social media primarily for recruitment, but their job offers on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook weren't getting the conversions they were looking for. And this was really due to their lack of any substantial audience. And they didn't really have a social media presence where users can go and click on their profile and see that they were successful and they lost some credibility there. So to address this, they started taking social media more seriously and they sought ways to grow their audience. They tried quite a few different methods from manual posting as well as using various tools such as Buffer and Hootsuite, but none of these strategies proved to be effective for them. And then they would get busy again with the agency and they would just neglect their socials until they needed to go and hire more, but then they were stuck with the same problem. So in response to this, they built their tool Neuralink. And it's a tool not only designed to manage social media, but to automate it as well. It's got a 4.9 star rating from 400 plus reviews. It supports tons of platforms here and over 9,000 entrepreneurs, startups, and companies trust them. So as mentioned, it's gonna do a lot of automation here. So you can automatically import, share, and recycle social media content from your blog, e-commerce store, podcast, YouTube channel, and more using automations. You can schedule months of social media posts in just minutes. And it's gonna make it really easy to do all of this in just one, two, three here. Next, let's dive into how they validated the product. So to start, they created a very basic landing page with just a quick description of the product and a few main features. They also attached a lead form to it so they could sign people up to a wait list. Then from there, they started sharing. They went to Reddit, Twitter, and communities on Facebook. And while they did get banned from some of them as it was seen as too promotional, they did get some really good responses. People ended up being very supportive and they got some really good feedback prior to launch. So they did this about for three months, all while building their MVP, and they collected about 300 plus subscribers with zero ads and zero paid marketing and this gave them an email list to launch to. So from there, they went and launched their product. In June of 2022, they started sending out the beta invitations and over a hundred people from the list signed up. They received an overwhelming amount of positive feedback. People loved things such as their automation features, which was actually a bit of surprise as this was a secondary feature for them and their planning roadmap. So because people had really liked this feature, they pivoted a little bit and shifted their focus to adding as many automations as possible. From there, they received many feature requests, many suggestions, many bug reports, and they were able to take all of this, learn and build from it. From there, they launched their paid plans and just a few days later, they got their first few orders. And during their beta phase, they were actually approached by a site called PitchGround. And there was an agreement there where they would launch New Link on their platform for a lifetime deal. So in November, 2022, they went and launched and their launch was a success. They generated $137,000 in revenue, including several consecutive days where revenue was exceeding 10K. And since then they've switched to monthly recurring revenue and they're currently doing 10K plus in MRR. They're also growing extremely quickly at around 25% per month. So let's bring things back to the beginning again and let's go over three different ways they went and got their first few customers. The first one is to build a landing page and start collecting emails as soon as possible. The next is to know your ideal customer or at least have a contact concept of it. And this is going to give you different communities, threads, and groups you can go and target to start to get beta users to your product. Lastly, it's to send regular email updates. So once you collect those emails, you just don't want to let them sit until you're ready to launch. You want to make sure you're sending them regular updates and asking for feedback or feature requests from them. This is going to ensure that when you launch, you're more top of mind. And with all of this, make sure you're launching as fast as possible. Don't try to perfect the product. 
launch a simple minimal viable product that's going to address one core problem. And then you can start getting feedback from real people, which is going to be so much more valuable than just going out and asking your friends what they think of what you've built. Bilal also shared what their number one growth hack was for building their SaaS. Now is to start building their SEO right away. And because they focus this so early, they're starting to get more and more organic traffic and people are starting to notice them. Other ways are building free tools and partnering with products that complement yours for more exposure. And this is a win-win as you're both going to increase your customer basis. In terms of the biggest lesson they've learned so far is that you should never go and build a SaaS product and just expect people to come. A SaaS business is so much more than the tech stack behind it. You have to have a superior product. You have to market it right. You have to teach people how to use it. And most importantly, you have to provide top-notch support. Bilal also has some great advice for aspiring founders of a SaaS product. And that's to prepare your MVP or minimal viable product to the best of your ability while making sure it solves one core problem. Don't launch with a half-baked product. Instead, try a fully baked half product. So cutting back on that feature set and really just addressing one core issue. Additionally, they're also going to recommend starting to find customers as soon as possible, preferably before starting to build anything. As once you have customers, you have a business and without them, you have nothing. If you've gotten this far in the video, I'm sure you want to build your very own micro SaaS. But to do so, you're going to need some ideas. And that's where I have you covered with free micro SaaS ideas you can steal. There's a link in the description below to get these ideas for free. I also have a complete course on how to build your very own micro SaaS, even if you don't have any SaaS experience or any product ideas. It's going to be a step-by-step -step academy that's going to show you how to build, scale, and profit from your very own micro SaaS. There's also a link in the description below to access the course there. So this is going to conclude the video here on how a Moroccan product designer turned entrepreneur built their SaaS product. There are some really good lessons here in the video from how they validated, how they got the idea, and how they got their first customers. The information from this video came from a site called Zero to SaaS, and I'll leave a link for this in the description below. If you enjoyed this video at all, I would love it so much if you smash that like and subscribe button below. I'm coming up with new videos just like this all the time, covering amazing SaaS journeys, and you don't want to miss out. If you have any suggestions for what's next, let me know in the comments. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.